Police officers who were on Capitol Hill on January the 6th, they will now campaign for Biden in key states. David Barnes is sitting next to I know to he's it, trying to get he? in. I, I feel the movement. Okay, you've got 30 seconds. Make your statement. Um, look, it could be a useful issue for them politically if President Trump lets it be by him saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to run a presidency of retribution. But if he comes and says, let's put this behind us, move forward, solve problems for American people, he mitigates it. January 6th was an awful day. Everybody agrees with that. But what um, President Biden's now doing is undermining democracy with these charges and this ridiculous I case. I mean, th this one here in New York is the worst. It's just utterly absurd. The aforementioned David Barnton is here. You don't expect rate cuts until after the election? At this point, with the market pricing in a 50% chance of a rate cut in September, it's come down from what was at one point a 100% chance. But um, I don't see why the Fed would bother to do a quarter point cut, which is meaningless, and then have to take all the flack over, oh, you did it right before the election. It would be a dumb criticism, but it will be a criticism that they would take. So I think they would say, for the sake of optics, we want to stay out of it, and we're going to begin after the election. But you don't think that rate cuts really matter that much, do you? No, certainly not. And it's very obvious in markets that we were assuming six rate cuts this year. We're now down to two. Some believe it could be zero. I think at the most it ends up being two in November, December, and the market's still up 10 percent. This whole thing about rate cuts back and forth has made for higher volatility. Yep. But it doesn't make a difference to ultimately where markets go, which are about earnings. Volatility as of now, as the 10-year Treasury goes close to 4.6 percent, that's producing the volatility in stock. But the 10-year Treasury has been between 4.3 and 4.7 for four months. Yep. It, it itself has become very volatile. So it's adding to volatility in the stock market. All right, David, stay there, please. You're with me for the hour. Okay. Lauren, looking yep. at the movers, you've got to start with the airlines. I think this is a big story today. Yeah. So look at American. It's yeah. down 50 Fifteen percent. It says it will slash its capacity growth in the second half of the year. We all thought we were in the middle of a wonderful holiday uh, travel season. The and numbers we are there. Memorial Day. The numbers are there, but the pricing might not be as much for American Airlines and maybe some of the others. Uh, oh, oh, I have a really good theory about it. It's a terrible business, always. Wow. Yes, it is. And always and forever. It, ever. I'll never invest in it again, I should say. Uh, Faraday Future, that's an EV maker. Is that down. a terrible business, too? By the looks of Just it. Just now. Yeah. Stock's down 28%. It's 84 cents a share. Look, Faraday mm. pulled their production forecast for the year. They says it's because of the current market conditions and funding. It's drying up. Where's it coming from? <laughs> Faraday Future. Uh, I got an idea about their future is going to be. Not too, not too good. Not, not <laughs> off. David Barnson has brought a couple of his very famous and lucrative dividend picks. Starbucks. Did you know Starbucks is down 40% from its high? The stock price. Yes. So the yield on the on the yeah, the, the yield has dividend. gone up to three percent, which is you know more than double the S and P's yield. They've grown the dividend every year. They're having real troubles with management. They have things that they need to fix, and that's what we like to buy as a value price. We don't like to overpay for stocks. You may have heard <laughs> Starbucks has gotten an attractive entry price with a three percent dividend yield. We have added Starbucks to our portfolio. You think I've got a shot at a capital gain if I buy at seventy-seven? The stock price might go up, and I'll still get my three percent. Rule of thumb, if I ever mention a company on air to you, yes. it's because I believe you have a chance at a capital gain. <laughs> I like because that. dividend growth is, is what is going to drive capital gains. Companies making more money and sharing more of it with us shareholders. Okay. How about Texas Instruments? It's another interesting story. We added it about a year ago. It was also weighed down. It's now up quite nicely since we bought it. Uh, you can see it's down a little bit here today, but they're finally getting a little attention with the AI story. You have a great dividend yield. They've grown at 16% per year for 10 years in a row. Texas Instruments. What's it pay now? Uh, right now it's paying over 3%, and again, you're getting this big double-digit dividend growth. Got it. David, thank you very much indeed. Change the subject. Look at actor Dennis Quaid. He says, oh, he plans to vote for Donald Trump in November. Did he give a reason, Lauren? Mainly because of the lawfare. I think I'm going to vote for him. Really? Yeah, in the next election. It just makes sense. I was ready not to vote for Trump until I, what I saw is more than politics. I, I see a weaponization of our justice system. You, you want to say there. something? 
His reason is very interesting to me because I'm hearing people every day say the same thing. I have never been one to defend President Trump when I disagree with him. He does things a lot that really bother me. But this attack with this case in New York has turned a lot of people to say they're going to vote for him. Yeah. They see it as an egregious uh, violation of due process. It's backfired on Biden, in my opinion. Yeah. Harvard University says it will no longer comment on matters that don't relate to its core function. Why they're doing this? It sounds like neutrality. Um, it's their new policy that says they won't make empathy statements about matters outside of education because that can be construed as expressing solidarity with one side. How long do you think this is going to last, David? Oh, five to ten minutes. Yeah. Right. But let me tell you something. Uh, they, they said their core function. Their core function is indoctrinating people with God-hating secular humanism. So that gives them a lot of opportunity to continue talking about issues because their core function is brainwashing very smart people to hate America, hate God, hate values, hate tradition, hate a conservative mentality. So they can continue doing all that. But it isn't just Israel. It was DEI and ESG before that. They're opposed to free speech. These people have become radicals, and it's the most prestigious institution in America, and it's a shame. I agree with that word. Thank you, David. Elon Musk working to get more support for his $56 billion pay package. Yep. What's he doing? He's offering Gigafactory tours in Texas for... For 15 shareholders on June 12th, that's the day before the shareholders will vote on his pay package. <laughs> it's already been approved. It was already well, approved. This yeah. is the law. They approved it. The board of directors approved it. it and it wasn't $56 billion. It was 10% of what he grew market cap. And he right. grew it over $600 billion. He made $600 billion for investors. He was legally entitled to it. This outrageous judge in Delaware is forcing them to reincorporate in Texas. This is terrible for all of us that are not out trying to get $56 billion pay packages because it undermines what we believe about law and business and the way they relate to one another. You have to defend rule of law, period. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. You're fired up, and I understand I'm why. Up. Good for you, lad. Elon Musk, uh, a bit more on, on Musk. His Neuralink, uh, looking to expand its trials. The company wants to enroll, I think it's three more new participants to evaluate that brain implant. Kelly O'Grady's got the story. What's, what's the latest on this? I mean, so this is super exciting. You're really marrying technology with human biology. But because of that, right, this is going to be a very long trial and regulatory process. David, I find this very exciting. Sure. I, I really do. But it's not the kind of company that you would invest in, is it? Well, let's be clear. We primarily do dividend growth investing because we have clients that hire us to preserve their capital, to give them income. This is a different category of investment. And sure. so we would very much do it for those where it was appropriate. You can lose 100% of your capital sure. here. Yep. And yet there could be very outsized returns. I'm more excited, as she talked about, for the human endeavor, the ability to enhance quality of life for people that have had a terrible accident. We all should be praying for this to be successful, even apart from the investment merits. Give Musk his $56 billion and put well, it into Neuralink. That's, that's, that's part of the point. He's got this company. He's got the AI company. He's got the Boring Tunnel yeah. company. The list goes on. SpaceX. So the shareholders might be worried that he's got too many things going on and he's not giving Tesla his focus. Some people might want be to worried. Keep him. Some people might be worried with Elon Musk's work-life balance. Yeah, right. Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> he Has works full-time. So. He doesn't have one, right? All right, David, thank you very much indeed. I want to say thank you to thank David you, Barnson sticking around for the entire hour. Good input today and we appreciate it. Thanks very much indeed.